Hey, a Merry Tuesday to everybody. It's Brian with BG Model Workshop, and it is 2020, which means we get to start on our 2020 builds that we have set aside. And we wanted to start off the year with our Countach LP500 from Tamiya. This is one of the kits that Tamiya produces wherein it's a battery-operated race car. Quite literally, literally a battery-operated race car because it has... Um, a little bar that kind of goes along the bottom here for running um, slot car tracks, stuff like that. And then a, a different type of a, um, oh, front suspension, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, the model car version, you can position the wheels. In the race car version, the wheels are actually kind of tucked up a little bit. So it, it doesn't use the front wheels. It just sort of rides on the little glider bar in the front there. But um that's all neither here nor there because we're not going to use that stuff and we are building it as the model of course so uh, with this little guy here uh, we just got done washing it and drying it off with this thing here this is uh, something we found in Mrs. BG's bathroom and it's kind of a cool device I'm not sure what she uses it for but um, whenever she does it dims all the lights in the house so you know that's kind of cool um, but Here's the chassis, and you can see we have a little on-off switch for the battery pack that's supposed to go in there, which we're not installing. And then here's some space for the little electric motor that doesn't come with the kit. And I don't really care because we're not using it as a race car, and it's just a kind of a fun, quick build for us. So there's a little bit of a, a tray here on the top for what's going to pass for the engine. And this is just the top of it here, and we're not focusing. There we go. So uh, I have one of the um, air cleaners on there. The other one fell off while washing, but I only had them press fit in place. So we will be doing this one in red because Lamborghinis look good in red. And this particular one is a representation of a particular car. Uh, it's by Wolf. It's a, a racing car enthusiast, I think is, is the, the story was, but I can't quite recall. Uh, it does have a cute little driver figure that we're going to try and do up. We've never done something like that before, so we're going to give that a shot. And then it is molded in three colors. We have our tan for our interior, and then red for the body, and black for the chassis, and a couple other detail parts. So we're going to get on with uh, doing a little bit more uh, uh, drying of the bits, and then we'll get on to possibly priming today. So hang on. Okay, so it is about 3.30 in the afternoon. It's still Tuesday. Uh, we um, <clears throat> let stuff dry a little bit farther, and we took a little break from this while we took down all the Christmas stuff and put that back up in the attic. So that's all taken care of, and we're ready to start the new year fresh and ready. So uh, we did do a little bit of work on the body. We used uh, Tamiya sanding sponges. We used 1,500 grit to go over all the surfaces. Um... The thing about this type of body I'm a little concerned about is that uh, because it's so angular and it has lots of flat panels and stuff, we're a little worried about being able to capture the paint to make it stay where we want to, so I decided to go ahead and do a little bit of a sanding on there. And uh, it does have some sharp edges here and there, you know, like along through the door seam, or I shouldn't say door seam, but the belt line here, uh, a little bit of a sharp edge, uh, so to speak, design-wise, so we wanted to make sure that the paint was going to grab on to where we want it to and let it stay there instead of run away from the edges. Uh, so that's all set up to go. We've got our cooling ducts um, glued together. We just have to dress the seam on that a little bit because I forgot to do those before we washed the parts but that's why we got gloves on so we don't get them all oilied up with pizza fingers. And then uh, let's see here we're going to get everything onto some craft sticks that have uh, double-sided sticky tape on there. A uh, little tip that we learned from our good friend James over at James Testers. Um, model Experiment. Uh, great guy. Excellent builder. I suggest you check him out. Um, just giving him a little plug here because he is he's, he, he has posted a second video and he's, uh, he's uh, building momentum and carrying it on through to this third video he's working on already. So, so there you go, James. Um, but yeah, and I have everything on his corkboard because this is uh, what I use for knolling my parts. What does knolling mean? Well, knolling is named after the guy who kind of just stumbled across what the process of arranging things in priority or order. Uh, so um, something like this, 
Now it'll be it'll actually be a little bit more important after we get everything primered because there will be two colors of primer. There'll be the gray primer for everything that's not red, and pink primer for everything that is red. So it, still, it'll be a, a, an easy thing to um, to disseminate which is which. But in most cases, uh, everything gets primered gray or white or just the same color or whatever. So when you lay out your parts, you'll be able to recognize, okay, these parts over here are going to be all interior parts. They're going to be this color. These are the body parts. They're going to be this color. These are the chassis and all that kind of stuff. So uh, knolling is a way of um, grouping and sorting everything that you have to work on and laying it out. It's something that watchmakers use uh, to, when they take apart the watches and stuff because they take it apart in sequence and then uh, they, put, they, they reverse that sequence and they reassemble the watch. But it's also a technique that us as model builders do, which, which we don't realize we're doing it, as well as our friends that build with Legos. Yes, that's right. When you lay out all of your Legos on your desk before you start building something, that's called knolling. So I bet you guys didn't know that. You just learned something, which means you're going to forget something old. All right, guys, we're going to get on to the priming stage, and we'll be back in just a little bit. And we are back. It is Wednesday morning, about uh, 9, eh, about quarter to 10 in the morning, uh, Central Mountain Time, of course. But um, we got everything painted last night, late in the evening. We used our spray booth out in the garage, and it went really, really well. Um, I'm still going to use a mask while I paint, just because of the back fumes that might come. And uh, we discovered last night that... Um, that that is going to be needed still, so I'm not too worried about that, which is fine. We should wear a mask anyway. But uh, we got on our little alligator clips here, our rear view mirrors. We did those in flat black. They were molded in, of course, a gloss black, but we just decided to put a flat black coat on there to make it more of a uniform. Here's our front bumper, and then over here are our air cleaners, and then our exhaust tips, which are molded together into one piece. Oops. And we did do a flat coat on this, and it kind of revealed that the chrome is a little on the thin side. So we may have to... I don't know if it attacked the chrome, or if it's just showing us that the, the chrome is on the thin side. So we may go back over that with some silver paint and touch the, touch those guys up. But they're, uh, they're, they're low priority right now. Up here is our chassis. Uh, this is actually the battery compartment cover which also doubles as our underside engine detail. So we did this in the German gray, and I really like that because uh, that allows us to go in with, with the different types of blacks, um, you know, flat black, gloss black, blah, blah, black, uh, Sharpie black, and uh, just to um, do some detail work on there, plus a little bit of uh, shading with the panel liner will help out uh, very, very 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 much so so um so that's cool that's all nicely done and um this is our trick here that our friend james had shown us where you add some double sided sticky tape to the uh to a popsicle stick or a craft stick and that um that's on there pretty good so just wanted to show you guys just how well that that little tip there works here's our steerable front suspension well, it's not really suspension, but it's still the steerable uh, front end here, and that's going to clip into place. Uh, I wanted to paint it separately because um, it is difficult to get around everything. Also, uh, it's, it has the, the, the little system where you put the metal pins in from the backside, and in order to do that, keeping this off the actual chassis seemed like a good idea, so we could get the, the angles just right to get the pins in there. And then over here we have our chrome engine top I guess we could call it uh, we did satin coat that and that's not looking too bad at all we'll probably do some gold or titanium gold on the carbs and um, some definitely some panel line washing on the uh, on the valve covers there so that's that's in the works and then again we did a German gray all over everything here so that we could detail in some black and not have to worry about having too much black and uh, so forth so there we go there and then over here is our interior bits and yeah they look a lot like the interior bits the color that before but we can see here the difference that was a little too caramel like like the candy caramel i didn't like that very much so i wanted to go with more of a sand color so i used a sand color <laughs> so there we go 
Um, here's our dash. It's looking pretty good. I did my best to try and hide the seam there, but we're not we're not perfect on that. I don't really mind. And then our interior tub. Again, we'll go over that with some. Uh, so it's kind of like almost like a semi gloss type of uh, how it's turned out. And we're going to probably do a flat color down here for the for anything that's supposed to resemble carpeting. I'm not going to. Um, Excuse me, I'm not going to um, flock this one here. I'm not too worried about that. And then here's our dude, who looks like some, quarter, some sort of, I don't know, Roger Corbin type of uh, monster. But um, we did a uh, Tamiya Racing White, and I had gotten about this far on it when I realized that the Tamiya Racing White is a high gloss color. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do a gloss on there. So um, I did spray the rest of the body kind of with that. I might just finish it off so it's all uniform in color and then go back over it with a flat coat. But in the meantime, say hello to my little pink friend. So we got our pink primer all over the body pits and um, it looks all right. I mean, it, it does look like it's made out of bubble gum and Pepto-Bismol, but uh, in the meantime, it's letting us know that we do have a few little, 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 little things here that we need to take care of, like this little booger over here in the corner of the, of the window. Uh, frame and then um, mostly it's looking pretty good these are our headlight buckets that pop up I think they're either they either put them in place up or down they don't they don't actually transition so there's a choice they made there and then um, our radiator intakes that are waiting to get finished so we can put them on top of the car but it would make it makes it so much easier to have these off and then paint them rather to have them placed because you're going to go in these blank spaces here and getting if I have to stay on the body and get around that kind of stuff I already have enough issues with all the grill work that's going on all over the car but that's where we're at right now we're hoping to possibly do some wet sanding um, I'm thinking maybe later today we do have a client coming in plus a model model group meeting we want to go to and it's on the other side of the valley, so it's going to be a lot. It's like a 45-minute car ride just to get over to the meeting tonight. So, And that's with no traffic, so we'll see how how, how well that goes tonight. But, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're sitting pretty right now. All right, guys, uh, we'll get back to you in just a little bit. Well, we're back once again. It's still Wednesday. It is about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're kind of wind down here at the desk because we got to get... Ready for the client that's coming here pretty soon, but uh, what we've gotten done so far is we had a flat coat on the dash, so that's nice and um, non-reflective now. And then uh, for the interior, did a little bit of a, uh, a wash on the instrumentation there, and I'm trying something different. I'm using the panel liner, the accent color. Um, and uh, we, we did a little bit of a wash on the dash first and then we'll go back and detail all the high points like the switches and the knobs and the dials and stuff and then uh, also go over the um, the shift gate <coughs> excuse me the shift gate plate that's on there and then it, we can see that there's a little bit still a little bit wet but we uh, do a little bit of a two-tone in here uh, we're going with what is this uh, our XF60 dark yellow uh, for the uh, for the uh, the carpeted areas, and then the lighter color. Once the uh, the darker color dries, the lighter color will go will go over with um, some future to give that more of a vinyl look to it, and um, and the seats as well. We'll do a vinyl look on the seats too. But we're going to leave the dashboard this this matte color here because I kind of like that. We'll just detail up the gauges and such. Uh, for the wheels and tires, we have, it's always surprising how small wheels and tires are from cars from the 70s and 80s. And up until the early 90s, they were like 15 inches was like the maximum size you could get. But um, I always liked the uh, the five-shooter revolver style wheels that they had on the uh, Lamborghinis. The rear ones are a little weird because they're they're very, very deep. So it just looks like there's a bunch of cylinders sticking through there. And it makes me think of the uh, my, my pellet gun back when I was a kid. I had a, you know, the uh, the point one seven seven. Uh, I had a point one seven seven revolver that that uh, that I swear had uh, looked just like the cylinder looked just like that. But um, so we got all that going on. We've uh, done a little bit to the uh, to the chrome bits here for the engine. We did um, 
Tamiya, that's uh, titanium gold X31, just for the carb stuff. And then once that's fully dried, we'll come back and hit that with some panel liner and bring out the uh, the grooving that's in the uh, the valve covers as well as all the linkage and stuff like that going on with the carbs. So for a little bit more visual interest, and then we'll start detailing painting the rest of the uh, the engine bay. Um, we have the bottom, ta-da! So I've done a panel line wash over the entire bottom and then I streaked it using a cotton bud to help bring some uh, directional uh, staining and stuff like that into, into play. And then we'll we'll finish, probably tomorrow, we'll, we'll get in there and start finishing up all the uh, detail painting for that. Uh, the, the, all the pink pieces that are sitting in another room waiting to be wet sanded, uh, that's going to happen later today or possibly tomorrow. That's more than likely, more than likely to do it that way. And then, um, the taillights, the taillight arrangement on a Lamborghini is a very interesting situation where you have the actual lights right through here. And then everything else seems like it's just a piece of colored, um, like a reflector color almost, uh, just, uh, tinted plastic so we're, we're kind of figuring out what we want to do with that the decals for the kit are toast they're pretty much crap i have um on order from the ebay i have some uh lamborghini decals uh so i can actually do the branding of the vehicle like on the little badges and stuff like that uh so those should be here sometime before the end of the year i hope because i i, I bought them on sunday and i haven't heard whether or not they're shipping it i think the guy prints them as he needs them but uh, yeah, we're gonna probably fill the uh, the rear view mirror faces because of that little pinhole there. Both of them have that, so yeah. Um, but uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention um, we are having some great success with our Tamiya jar paints because we invested in this. It's the paint retarder for the acrylic paints, and a few drops of this into a little cap of uh, paint. This has been sitting on the desk for over an hour, and it's still liquidy. So one of the curses of the Tamiya stuff is it dries out very, very fast. And I painted this about 20 minutes ago, and it's still curing. So it's faster than an enamel, but it's slower than the stuff out of the jar. So I like that a lot. So that's, there's a tip for you guys. If you see this at your hobby store, it's the one with the, with the light blue lid. Uh, get it and use it, because it's going to help you out with your brush painting. Don't. Don't add it to the jar of paint. Just put a couple of drops in whatever you're using for your paint cup. Um, if you put it all in the jar, then you're going to get it's going to get real expensive real fast because you're going to have to fill all of your jars. And uh, as I have heard, it's just going to go away and it's going to mess up uh, your, your painting and stuff like that. So I just do the the, uh, the couple drops in the lid. All right. Oh, and one other thing is our figure. We have his arms kind of positioned where we think we might want them. But something weird had happened where we all of a sudden have little bits of pink all over it. So I must have gotten some cross-contamination from uh, when I was priming the body uh, of the car when I started to paint this guy. So we're going to have to go back and deal with that somehow but it was just weird i went back to go look at this and like oh that's looking great hey where do, where is it pink <laughs> dang it all right well as it is uh we're not doing too bad so we're on track uh, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later on thanks and we're back again uh it is thursday it's uh about 10 40 a.m uh, it's my favorite day of the week. It's laundry day, so I'm running back and forth between the bench and the laundry machine while it's doing its job. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start doing the wet sanding on our body. Uh, the primer, even though it's pink, has let us know that there are a few little things here and there that we need to attack, address, like this little extra flash right here. And being a Tamiya model kit, there wasn't that much to deal with. There was a very, very thin very fine uh, mold line that went along this fender here and up through pretty much all the way along the edge here and then uh, tucked back underneath on the bottom side. Very, very faint. Uh, I think if I had missed that and not and not done it, it probably still wouldn't have been a big deal, but I did find it, so I, I tried to take care of it. Uh, we're gonna do the sanding on these bits here and then um, uh, the air cleaners. Uh, there's a little oval on there that we can just barely see uh, that whole oval surface is supposed to be uh, some sort of metallic silver or something like that so 
Uh, we're going to figure out how to mask that off because the rest of it's supposed to be flat black. So we're going to figure out how to mask that off and then paint those. Um, I'm hoping we can paint today because the weather isn't so great, even though it's Arizona, but it's still January. So, uh, and then uh, our, our our current uh, head scratcher is the fact that our decals are, are junk. Um, I did put them in the the window, the front window, for a couple days so that the uh, the, the, they would bleach out a little bit and they did but they are very dry i'll probably hit them with some decal bonder to help help that along but the, i mean these decals are from 1976 um but the thing that bugs me are is this these are the, this is the tail light panels and they have a transparent piece of plastic for that and we are supposed to Oops, I got my finger stuck on the side of the tape. Uh, I got uh, supposed to stick these to the back side of this, and then this goes to the uh, reflector uh, piece. But um, they're so faded. They were pretty faded before I put them in the window. Uh, I don't think I'm going to deal with those because this actually has some nice molded detail for the stoplight, turn signal, and backup lights. Uh, and from the back side here, we can see that they're actually depressed in there. So I thought, well, we'll, we'll dribble a little bit of transparent paint in there. And then when that cures, uh, we'll hit that with some silver or something on the back side to, to help out the reflectivity of it. And then we'll just paint the, the whole back side of this, the body color. Um, I thought maybe that it would look pretty cool. So hopefully that works out okay, because I don't want to have to paint... The facing surface of it because um well it's just not going to look great <laughs> so so yeah uh we're, we're debating on what we want to do and i don't want to have to mask off these silly little squares because they're not very they're not very crisply done that would just you know it's not going to look that awesome so uh we'll see how it goes um and because it's a lamborghini you always see the back end of the car because it's racing away from you at breakneck speed i'm just kidding most of the times when I see a Lamborghini, it's in a showroom someplace, and it's just sitting there. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as Lamborghinis go, this was always my favorite. I fell in love with this the first time I ever saw one of these in the movie Cannonball Run. It was a black one. I thought, oh, my God, these things are just made to be in black. And then years later, I saw one in red. I'm like, oh, wow, these things are really made to be red. And then I saw one in white, and I thought, oh, wow, these things are really made to be white. And I saw one in yellow, and I was like, mm, no. <laughs> no, it's either black, white, or red for me when it comes to these things. I've seen metallic green and stuff, and that's uh, that's okay, too. But not, not, not as awesome as the black, red, or white, so... Anyway, that's my uh, color uh, choice opinions. Uh, it still doesn't look bad in pink. Of something about this is it, it, it does look like a naked mall rat, but it's uh, I mean it's not a horrible color for this thing. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just gloss coat the uh, the pink and go with it from there. Nah, we'll paint it. We'll paint it. But uh, we got a lot of blacking out to do on this. Um, the bird cage stuff going on up here, all the vents and grills, and then the. Uh, moldings along the wheels and then the chin spoiler and everything that's all supposed to be black on this particular car most lamborghinis uh it was all body color uh but this particular one because we're doing the walter wolf edition uh it's supposed to have the um the uh blacked out bits here and there so not too worried about it it's going to be fun all right so we'll uh get on to work and we'll check back a little bit <laughs> 